Ranking of Kings is a Japanese anime series that follows the story of Boji, a young deaf and mute prince who dreams of becoming a great king despite the challenges he faces due to his disabilities. With the help of his new friend Cage, a skilled assassin, Boji sets out on a journey to prove himself and claim his rightful place on the throne. Along the way, he must overcome various obstacles and face dangerous enemies, all while learning important life lessons about perseverance, friendship, and the true meaning of strength. Contrary to what meets the eye, Boji, a petite, deaf, and mute prince, is actually the son of the world's strongest giants, Sheena and Boss. He navigates through the kingdom as an outcast and no one truly understands him, from the royals and their loyal servants to the commoners. Upon stumbling upon a shadow creature, Cage one day, Boji quickly finds their interaction to be of great value, even though he keeps getting robbed. The thief reflects on his loneliness and relates it to the feeble giant, later vowing to befriend him. When they go back to the castle, Boji and his younger stepbrother fight. Boji is unmatched by the skills and strength of his brother Daida and is quickly beaten to a pulp. The stepmother, healing, drains all her energy to heal him when he's unconscious, revealing her true intentions. Cage's past is also traumatic as he's the last surviving member of the Shadow Clan, and upon finding that out, the royal instructor Bebin threatens to kill him off too if he doesn't stay away from Boji. Before passing, Boss announces his firstborn to be the next heir to the throne. However, Healing opposes this decision and announces her son to be king instead. Inabilities become more obvious to the tiny giant, and so he swears to run off somewhere on an adventure far away to become stronger. At first, Healing opposes the entire idea, but is swayed by Boji's sheer determination, appointing two instructors for him, Domes and Okuro. As the three embark on a journey in the outside world, Daida lets the luxuries of kingship rot his brain. He also finds a mysterious talking mirror named Baranjo who offers to become his personal advisor. Tuma is secretly hired by the Daida to kill his older brother as the mirror urges him to take care of a potential coup before it even happens. After sending a crew elsewhere, Tuma takes Buji to the opening of the underworld and betrays him by pushing him off the edge. Cage reappears from the little prince's satchel and both reunite as they bawl hysterically. The shadow friend unravels the entire plan which Bebin has plotted for the two. In search of true strength and power, the lord of the underworld would be the only one to help. After regaining consciousness, both of them find themselves right in front of Lord Desha, who is the highest ranking king in the entire world. Cage states their case and shows a recommendation letter to prove it. However, Desha refuses until he gets to see Buji's potential. He asks him to duel against his generals. Unimpressed, he commands them to get kicked out. The general hands them back their letter and tells them the person they're looking for is actually Desha's brother Despa. Back home, Daida gets talked into following through a cursed ritual to drink his dad's blood. Pius, one of the big four to serve royalty, is somehow extremely loyal to the Taken Mirror and accompanies it along with Daida to an underground lair. He knocks the spoiled king out and forces a curse drink down his throat. The underworld's less daunting version of the king welcomes the adventurers inside his home. Despa is the complete opposite of Desha. And without creating any further complications, he offers training Boji upon the right payment only. Luckily for him, the boy hands over a bag full of royal goods, and they're good to go. The ritual is instructed by Miranjo and Apias, and without questioning, correctly follows the steps. Shortly after, Daida's soul is entrapped in a deep, dark void. He tries calling for help, however, he realizes very quickly that it's futile. Boss's consciousness enters his son's body, and he continues to rule over his kingdom like before. Parallel to the events on the surface, the underworld has interesting updates as well as regarding Boji's training. Despa soon figures out that Boji has been hexed since birth. With a surprisingly strong gut, he's indeed the son of the strongest giant parents. However, he has been stripped away of his powers. This doesn't discourage the trio as he worked even harder than before. Cage with his house chores, Despo with mentoring, and Boji with his training. King Boss's past is disclosed to give more insight into what led to these twisted events so far. During his time of youth, all Boss is obsessed with is his ranking in the world. He wishes to reach number one, and young Baranjo, who's rescued by him, also supports this venture. She introduces him to the devil, and a deal is struck between them. Boss seeks an offspring stronger than him, which in turn would give him power, and Miranjo is just to witness the king's dreams come true. Boji's origin of the curse is discovered. The first queen, Sheena, tragically dies while defending her beloved son. Miranjo is the one behind her death as she loads King Boss's decision to settle down with his newfound family. She feels betrayed by his decision as their adventures brought her great joy. 
King Boss reluctantly forms a bond with Muranjo again, this time with her body entrapped in a special mirror. She advises him to remarry an average woman who's also a powerful healing magician. Boji's new stepmother is very different to his birth mother, and due to his hearing and speaking inability, he often keeps to himself. Throughout the years, the queen slowly tries to warm up to him, learning his own special way of communicating and even going as far as directing her own son to take care of his older sibling after he grows a bit older. She loves little Boji deeply just as much, if not more than Dida. Despa diligently comes up with new ways to bring the best out of his young disciple. Finally, on the fateful day, a loud rumble is heard from one of the secret rooms in Despa's house. As Cage rushes to ensure his poor old best friend's safety, he's greeted by the new and improved version of the hardworking giant instead. As Despa proudly announces the completion of Boji's training, tears well up in Kage's eyes. After seeing a cool sword sheath on his friend's hips, he demands to see the majestic sword that he can Carries. But this sinks Cage's heart as a sword, if one could even call it that, turns out to be a small little metal toothpick. He charges over the instructor and demands a refund as he thinks they had been ripped off of a good deal. But instead, it's proven wrong when Boji takes his mentor's side. Possessed Dida orders Queen Hilling to be arrested. During this time, the real Dida comes across the tragic past of young Miranjo. He sees villagers rip her body to shreds after her mother is killed off as well. He offers her comfort and tells her that he'll put both of them out of the mess. A band of high-ranking criminals is offered an alliance in exchange for their freedom by the Takin Mare. Boss's intentions are not yet clear. Moreover, a great showdown is to occur, the royal forces versus the newly escaped prisoners of the Underworld. The same general who had guided the little adventurers to Despa now informs them of the events taking place on the surface. They intend to seek their help to defeat all the villains who had escaped. Hilling is attacked by monsters under the control of Moranjo, but she manages to slip away only barely. The kingdom is terrorized by overpowered criminals out of which the most unhinged one wears armor. Boji and the forces of the Underworld reach just in time to distract the enemies. Oaken is a lunatic. He enjoys observing barely breathing people at the brink of death, and unfortunately so, the entire army cannot compete with him. Despa orders his student to make a run for it as he distracts the monstrous villain. Each character's encounter with another is a gut-churning, nail-biting, hair-clenching experience. Desha and Despa communicate with one another to control Oken. Cage and his little friend rush to the castle to save everyone there. Hilling is saved as a curly-haired prince pounces and attacks the giant ogre. The towering creature offers help after his defeat and admires Boji for being strong. All of them march towards the portal to return the mind-controlled monsters to their home. A little backstory to the Dark Oken. Despa and the gloomy brother Desha is that they're all born to the same father, Satun. Oken inherits immortality while Desha gets magical powers. Despa, on the other hand, receives nothing special apart from his natural charm. All three sons of Satun are well-rounded individuals. However, after receiving immortality, Oken changes. Since he cannot physically die or damage himself, he enjoys seeing other people in that misery. Boji enters Oken again and this time, the mirror keeps talking to it directing it to produce nothing but chaos. The brave young boy keeps swinging his toothpick-like sword to no avail. He's surely strong, but immortalities occurs that he cannot compete against. Before the armored demon does anything to harm Boji, King Boss swiftly picks up his body entrails and neatly packs him in a rock. Miranjo, after feeling like she had done terrible things, asks for forgiveness. Before she could do any more harm, she wants her physical manifestation to be destroyed first. This breaks the curse, undoing Boss's reincarnation, and a devil appears again. Miranjo is stuck inside its belly, and before it can fly off to escape, Boji asks his teacher to shoot at it. After beheading the devil, a wish is granted to them. Dida's soul is set free, and he finally comes back to his body. Except he doesn't leave Miranjo behind, he makes use of the wish to rescue her from the stomach of the very same devil that had cursed her and his father. The young prince lovingly enwraps her in his arms and reassuringly tells her that she's safe from all kinds of harm now. Soon after, the smitten lovebird announces his love for her. But when Queen disapproves, Boji gives reassurance to his mother after knowing Miranjo's truth as well. This time, the former king's firstborn becomes the rightful owner of the throne, the bravest, tiniest, and the most determined dwarf giant. The ranking of kings has been one of the most anticipated anime of the season, and with the new season airing this year, it's expected to be even more than the last one. What exciting events await the little king? Will he set out to dethrone others to become the number one ranking king in the world? Like this video if you enjoyed following along the adventure, and subscribe for more updates.